Are there symptoms of a cracked heat exchanger? Is that one of those things that you can kind of tell if you might if that might be a problem for you? Actually, that's one of the scary things. You're, and you're you're talking about like the homeowner. Is there something the homeowner yes. can do to know? Are there it's, symptoms? Right. That's kind of the scary part is no, there really aren't. Ah! You really don't know when it's happened. That's why it's such a good jo- idea to have a professional looking at it, checking it mm-hmm. every year. There's no exceptions. You got it. You got to check them every year. Now, as far as the professional looking at the furnace, there are things that he can see that are noticeable as far as a crack in a heat exchanger. You know, sometimes it will affect how the furnace is burning its natural gas, things like that. If someone told you you have a cracked heat exchanger or a flawed heat exchanger, they should be able to show that to you. Yeah, it's a provable thing. It's it's not a mystery. They should be able to show you, even though you've never looked inside a furnace before, that technician should be able to show you where that crack is and explain Mm -hmm. it to you. So how do our technicians show customers how do they prove the crack in the heat exchanger well, so they can infrared. visually see it? Or? But we have infrared cameras. We have cameras that we can run down inside your uh, furnace and, and look at it. That's usually the best and easiest way, but sometimes we have to do it with uh, a mirror and a flashlight. Sometimes that's the easiest way, but regardless of the method, you should be comfortable in that diagnosis that yes, I, I, see it. I mm-hmm. do. See, yes, that's not good. And, and then understand that it's an absolute thing with us. We can't tolerate even that. even if it's cracked a little bit. Right. But... It's kind of it's kind of like when you have a smoke detector. The smoke detector went off, but you know I'm I'm only seeing just a little bit of smoke. You know, it's not. <laughs> you know, is it really dangerous right now? So yes, it, we're governed by codes and and uh, we we have to turn it off. Why is a cracked heat exchanger in your furnace so dangerous? Yeah, well, for one, I, I always uh, want to be careful. Uh, people may not know the terms. You know, they, they hear terms like heat exchangers or compressors. And, and what is that? What's that do? Right. And, and every gas furnace, we're talking about gas furnaces, but all gas furnaces have at least one heat exchanger. And the, uh, the heat exchanger in a furnace is a, um, a steel tube or clamshell. It's a device that is used to transfer the heat from the byproducts of combustion. So we're gonna burn natural gas, which makes things, which generates heat. And we're gonna use the heat exchanger to transfer the heat from those flue gases to the air that you have in your house, to heat your house with, okay? It's a means of transferring that heat. So like I said, it's usually made out of steel or stainless steel. Uh, It's in the form of a tube or multiple tubes or a clamshell, which is like a, a piece of metal folded together to make a clamshell. How the furnace works is, and and just think about this, the furnace all winter long. Every time you hear that thermostat click and you hear the furnace come on downstairs, what it does is it opens a gas valve downstairs and we start burning natural gas downstairs and heating that heat exchanger up, that tube or clamshell, whatever it is. We're heating it up and once it gets warm enough, it's going to turn the blower onto the furnace and we start circulating air and blow it across this hot piece of steel and warm it up. We kind of toast it. We toast the air. And then uh, once the thermostat is satisfied, it turns the gas off and reverses the cycle. And so now it cools that heat exchanger down until it turns off. So it, it goes from too hot to touch to cool as a cucumber in just one cycle of the mm-hmm. furnace. Well, that heat exchanger, when it heats up, it expands and contracts. It's it's microscopic, but that metal is moving. It expands and contracts. Over time, with that expansion and contraction, with that movement, it can develop cracks, can fail. Much an illustration, old illustration was a, this is a common paper clip, but if I sit here and take this paper clip and bend it, you know, just keep bending it like this, eventually it's going to get gonna weaker. Wind. Yeah. It gets weaker. Get weaker you, can, and... you can, sometimes you can keep bending that thing and I'll be here for 20 minutes bending this. And then other times they break real quick. You just really never know, but you can feel that metal change from being kind of rigid to now it feels kind of soft to then before it breaks, it almost gets kind of brittle and kind of break, and then just eventually breaks. Well, that's what that heat exchanger does. It ex- through that expansion and contraction all winter long. Eventually, you can have a, a-
crack or a, a flaw. And you have to understand there's two sides to that heat exchanger. On the inside of that tube, let's say, and you can kind of think of it as almost like an, a pot belly stove. We have, we have, we're burning natural gas inside that pot belly stove, inside that tube. And with it, now we have all the byproducts of combustion, all the carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, all the gases are inside that. On the outside of that tube, on the outside of that pot belly stove is the air that we're circulating through the house. So that's mm. what separates. It's keeping it contained inside. It's, all the bad exactly. stuff is contained inside that the heat exchanger. That is what separates okay. the bad stuff that makes headlines to the air mm. that you're breathing inside your house. And yeah. so when, when we discover a crack in that heat exchanger, you have to understand we're the professionals here that is a fatal flaw. Is it gassing your house right now? Or are you, well, no, probably not, maybe not, I, I, but it's we don't there. Know. Yeah. It's there. And uh, it is, we have to turn the furnace off. Now, when that happens, a couple of things you need to be aware of is um, many times that heat exchanger, that component in that furnace, can have a warranty on it. Typically, a heat exchanger warranty has a much longer warranty than all the other components in the furnace. So you may think that furnace is out of warranty. Well, it might be completely out of warranty except for the heat exchanger. So it's 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 good to have someone there that knows what they're looking at, knows how to determine do you have a warranty or don't you have a warranty and th things like that. We have some furnaces, if that heat exchanger ever fails, we'll get, the manufacturer will give you a brand new furnace. They'll, mm -hmm. they'll replace the whole thing. You know, we, we have our one hour furnaces that uh, some of them even have a no lemon guarantee, which means if that heat exchanger ever fails, we'll give you a new furnace. Will a cracked heat exchanger cause the furnace to fail? When the heat exchanger cracks, it is a failure. It's a major failure. True. However, maybe what Will it turn off the heat? Is, yeah. What, it, what is interesting is there's a lot of things that if a furnace is not adjusted properly, it might be getting hotter than what it's supposed to. Mm. And before it cools off, which puts mm. extra stress on that it might heat cause exchanger. It to crack faster. Yeah. Or, than uh, okay. If uh, if your uh, filter isn't being replaced properly, you know, it can that can cause the furnace to overheat and run hotter than what it should. Those are very common, two two of the most common things. But that's why it's always good to have a professional check the furnace a, so we can check the heat exchanger and know that it's safe and it's going to keep you and your family safe but but also is everything adjusted properly so it's going to last a long long time and that's why sometimes it seems like the warranties on these pieces of equipment are tied to maintenance exactly the because the manufacturers of the equipment know that hey if this thing gets all gunked up it's going to run harder and it will crack right, right. you're you almost <laughs> inviting it to not maintain the furnace and, and cause it to operate in conditions that are far outside the specs of it. Well, yeah, no, it's not going to last. It, it, it can't last. Where on the other hand, like I said, we've got some one hour furnaces that uh, instead of just an aluminized steel heat exchanger, it's actually stainless steel. And these things are, I mean, I can never say never, it never fails. But I mean, it is so rare it is so rare for one of our furnaces to fail in that way. You can almost say, uh, well, it's why they'll, many of them will say, we'll give you a new furnace. If it, yeah. you know, cause it's it, so rare. It, mm -hmm. It's so rare. That's how rare it is. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Dad. Very good. It's going to be a long winter. I know. Ah!